start regular music lessons. Now, what I want to say is that because it's the first time we're doing that, so we're trying to provide you with extended learning opportunities. It's taking a little time, but it will happen. So therefore, to reduce the risk of exchange rates, the manager or the guys could use derivatives. So this simple financial instrument, which means that like usually it won't fluctuate that much within some certain amount of time, so it can make it have less time to read. Very nice. Yes, yes, I do agree with that as well. Byron, what did you think was good or positive in that answer? Um, really, you need to thought in that you know, which one you can. <laughs> and the execution of it <laughs> may be a bit uh, off. I don't know if you need to go that in depth into each of the different options, but I didn't like that much, so I don't know if that may be valid. But overall, I think you have a grasp of uh, and a deep understanding of the subject matter. Thank you very much. Anjali, you will now receive a round of applause. <laughs> My name is Prevanjali. I'm in year 12 at the Bhaktivedanta Swami Gurukul here in New Govardhan, Australia. I've been at this school since I was in kindergarten, so I've had the full experience like that. And I've definitely um, seen how much the school has been changing over the years. And like that, it's been like a really amazing experience to see it go from how small it was to how it has the high school now and how much it's grown. And um, yeah, it's been really nice experience to be able to have this community with the school as well because it really brings everyone from all parts of the world. We have our friends from Bali, our friends from different parts of Australia who all have moved here just for the school. So it gives a really nice sort of um, cultural diversity within the community and within the school. And it's definitely such an asset to have on this, on this farm and in this area because it's quite rural, but it, in a sense, bringing everybody here because, because of that. So, my name is Balaram and I am in grade 12. Mm -hmm. I am originally from Moscow, Russia, and I moved here like six years ago. Mm -hmm. And me and my sister go to the same grade, year 12. Your sister is in the class with you? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, that's good because you, you have been, you are coming from the public school or private yeah, school? Public. Okay, back in Moscow? Moscow. Moscow, all right. So, uh, well, then I, I'm going to dig directly into the, the theme, which yeah. is the, the differences, main differences between the school outside and the school in the Hare mm -hmm. Krishna community. Uh, so you grew up anyway in a Hare Krishna family? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you had these values anyway from, from very early age? Yeah, okay. from like five or something. Okay, and you came six years ago, so you were like uh, 10 years old, yeah. more or less? What do you feel are the, the main differences between public school you have been in and the Hare Krishna school? Um, definitely the, the love and care between like, the students and the teachers. I've noticed that the students really do care about all the students in, in quite a different way. It's not like as a job thing. It's more like, I don't know, they, we always refer to ourselves as more like a family. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the teachers would come up to him and be like, oh, how are you going? Like, you know, they're not getting paid to say that. They're getting paid to teach us. So mm -hmm. like, they truly do care about us. And I right. think that's... And okay. uh, how was your experience before in the public school? Well, you've been small anyway yeah. until 10. I mean, so it was okay. I didn't really mind it. I mean, I had like a small group of friends, but it wasn't like I could like, exp like express myself to them and to the teachers either. There was always like a hierarchy of like, you know, Higher grade students are like mm -hmm. better people, and they're like lower students. So like you know, but here I feel like everyone is friends together. So like let's say the grade twelves and the grade nines are like friends, even mm -hmm. though they're from different grades. Whereas in Russia, I feel like if you're from grade twelve, you're not gonna want to like talk to like grade eights or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my name is Vishaka, and I've grown up in the Hare Krishna community, but I only moved to the school last year. Okay. So I used to live um, in South Australia and I went to a normal public school. Public school. Before this, yeah. Okay. So it's just one year you're in the Hare Krishna school? 
Yeah. So this is my second year here. Second year. Okay. From your perspective, what is the main difference that you had to leave? Well, you did already privately because in the family, your family is a Hare Krishna, right? Yeah, yeah. But from the public school environment into a school like this, what are the main differences you can you could feel on your skin? Um, I guess the differences is the whole like spirituality thing. Like before I came to the school, we just had like it was just at home and we didn't really go like to temples and stuff like that. But when we came here, like it just really like deepened. Mm-hmm. And like the fr- like my friends here, they're like way more closer than like I had before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's so many like opportunities here. We go to the temples and do services, and it's just it's really nice. <laughs> I guess at the other schools, it was more like professional kind of. Mm-hmm. Like here, like all of the teachers, they're just kind of like friends and more like you develop a more like friendly relationship with the teachers. I think we've had a lot of students or people who, devotees, non-devotees, who have come to the school and, you know, I've seen a lot of my friends, they left in primary school because they didn't have this high school like available mm-hmm. yet. So now we see that we have this group in the high school, about 30 kids, And we're all kind of close, like we have this, you know, some are 15, some are close to 20, but it's kind of, we all hang out together and there's smaller social groups within that, but we really are all, we can relate to each other in a lot of ways because it's a small environment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's always the pros and cons, but I've really, really noticed that the students who have left and who have been here for some time, but then gone to other high schools and gone into that bigger environment where there's 400 kids, 500 kids and It's, they really, it's, the difference now is that although we have been learning the same thing, this is a government-based school, we do the same curriculum, we have to follow the syllabus, even though we're learning the same things, every, every day we have these teachers who have just had their whole life enriched with the philosophy or with the principles and the teachings, and it's kind of just like you are just open to all this discussion all the time, and it's just these sort of little comments that come out here or these opportunities that the teachers provide to be able to just discuss what is what is the philosophy or what is the moral principles of society you know and they kind of really help you develop that from a young age and even more when you get into teenage years it can be like you know having to judge what is what do I want to do do I want to be a vegetarian do I want to Mm. you know be chanting is this my religion or like this but they it's not that even the religion is in any way forced it's just presented in a very easily to understand way, very understandable way. So I feel like it's it's almost as if the people who have been here for even just a few years, they can really start to understand and develop these sort of qualities because they're so nicely presented and so nicely discussed and like openly just talked about that you don't have to have this worry of, if you ever have any doubts in your mind, you can just ask someone and they're always there to like give you the time of day and explain why. Mm-hmm. So I, I really noticed that difference is that with the other schools, you don't always get that same that same facility to be able to just really talk to your teachers on like a really personal level or like have your teachers really go out of their way to like, you know, make sure that you're always emotionally all right, like physically all right, mentally all right, spiritually all right, like always there to just support you in this way. And mm-hmm. it's it's co- becoming quite evident now and I'm seeing people from other schools, like even though they know the philosophy or they know, you know, maybe the things that you should or shouldn't do in life, like drinking or partying a lot, like, as a teenager that's just something that happens but I can really see that everyone especially in the year 12s now because it's just been such a long <laughs> journey they really all have that deep principle kind of with within them or within us where we know where we what our morals are or what our values are mm-hmm. so we're able to better take that out into society so when we finish it's not that we've been oh we've, they've just been forcing us to be like this it's kind of like no we have had time to question ourselves and really understand what our own values are and what we'd like to present to the world so it's a really nice nice Mm -hmm. thing that happens at the school i feel like the school should more be teaching the kids how to overcome obstacles in Mm -hmm. life not just not just like financially or like socially but you know just like within themselves maybe Mm -hmm. so like this week's topic is resilience Mm -hmm. which is i think is a great thing so more of that and more like of the the principles of life should be taught I feel like resilience is a big part of my life just like being strong and standing up to yourself is a big part and the school really does provide those values and like enlightens 
in lines me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how much is the school preparing you for these challenges? Um, I guess they are a little bit. Um, I've like discussed with like other teachers and they've been helping me like look into career options and looking into universities and how to um, like the application processes and stuff like that. So they've mm -hmm. been really helpful with mm -hmm. and like helping me possibly do some work experience and stuff as well in the area in areas that I interested in. So. Okay, so you already uh, kind of with the help of and support of peers and uh, teacher, you already found a little bit the, the path you want to go to. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, fashion design. <laughs> fashion design. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, for a lot of people, the a lot of questions come up at this time of your life, like you know, what sure. is the purpose? What is the what is my goal? What is my aim? What you know, you know, why can't I just get drunk every night? Like, what's the you know, like it, it, little things that, that mm. might seem a bit extreme, but yeah. um, it's. It's a, it's a big thing because they don't have answers mm -hmm. and they might be given some answers but it, it's hard to really understand if that's what you believe in unless you're able to question it and really like, you know, kind of examine it and like come to terms with what you really believe. So mm -hmm. for a lot of people who I do know, like I have plenty of friends, plenty of exposure to the community with people who are growing up like that. Some of them even people I, you know, like was here at this school, I've known them my whole life but it's um you can definitely see a big sort of how would you explain it like when they kind of pull away a lot you know you, you have mm -hmm. to go on that little tangent where you experience different things because they just don't they don't know it's mm -hmm. kind of I feel like that's the big difference is that here you can learn like this they say there's three different types of intelligence one where someone tells you not to do something so you just don't do it mm -hmm. one where you have to try it and then you go okay that wasn't very good and then you don't do it mm -hmm. and the third is you go you try it, it doesn't work, and you go, oh, maybe if I, if I do it again, then it, it, you know, and you keep doing the wrong thing. And so in that way, it's kind of here, we are able to just be told or ex discuss it, not just, you know, directly at us, but we can discuss, okay, I, I kind of get why we shouldn't do that. So then you never have to try it because you kind of have been able to experience that, those sort of things. Whereas for these other people and my other friends, they, it's hard because they, you know, it's not that there's anything wrong with them. It's not that they are different than no, us. Sure. It's just that they haven't had that same same sort of experience mm. they haven't had the same peer peer groups the people you hang out with completely reflect on who you are yourself sure. like very easily can be distracting so when you're surrounded by a lot of people who all have the same sort of upbringing as you and have mm. the same sort of moral values it's really easy to to strengthen those sure compared to maybe having so many different people who have different upbringings, different ideas, different cultures, and having to decide for yourself can be really like, ah, I don't know what's the right one to do, I don't know where mm -hmm. to go. So it's a really nice thing about this school is that you're able to, um, to have that sense of community within, mm -hmm. within the classroom. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges in life for you? Um, probably um, going against that, that principle that um, money is everything mm -hmm. and if you don't have money you're no one I feel like that's not the case with this school with this school it really just makes you the school um, tries to um, express yourself and who you are so let's say I don't know like for me I'm a, I want to be a producer mm -hmm. and that might not be like the like a very like financially like stable like job or anything but that's what I like and that's what the school um, wants me to like express myself in. I was always into music, but coming here, I realized that that's what I want to do. Yeah. Okay, and the the teacher and every and the community has been supporting you in this. Yeah, they they provided me with uh, like work experiences where mm -hmm. I was able to go into a university mm -hmm. and like do the university like uh, level classes in like in music production, sound design, okay. and stuff. The challenges that you that you naturally have, like you said, the, it's something that pretty much everyone will face in life. It's mm -hmm. something kind of unavoidable. How will you how will you make money? How will you what will you do? Even if it's just a challenge. Will you study? Will you travel? Will you how will you finance that travel? Like these sort of things. And I guess for us, it's the same challenges are there. They, it's not that anything new arises. I feel like we've definitely had a in a lot of ways the same sort of general thing like you know we've had the same school experience mm -hmm. we've had the same as in content of what we're learning so when we leave school or when we go out into the world there is definitely 
that those struggles will be there. But I think that the big sort of, you could say, difference or turning point for us is that we've been lucky enough to have, I guess, a bit more depth into how to deal with those challenges. Mm -hmm. Our actions or what we're doing in our life is kind of based around being able to have a service attitude. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the highest points in this philosophy is that you can develop an attitude of being respectful and humble and, you know, not putting yourself down, but, you know, taking the, the sort of wing position where you are always trying to help others or develop these sort of, this sort of a mood. So when you're faced with challenges, it, it gives us this philosophy that we've been taught gives us a deeper understanding of why these challenges are happening. So things like reincarnation, karma, um, it's, it's discussed and we're able to understand, okay, maybe the reason why I'm going through this hardship or this challenge or this struggle or having a problem with my relationships or having a problem with, you know, really not being able to get money or really, you know, like family members passing away, like anything like this, it mm -hmm. kind of, even though it's still a, like a hardship, you still have to go through that. It gives that sort of solace of knowing that there's a reason behind it and that mm -hmm. there's a higher sort of under, you can relate to it better because you go, okay, you know, maybe this is happening from like, you know, previous actions that I've done in even other lives, you know, mm -hmm. it's, so it gives you an understanding that there's always, there's always Krishna there. There's always someone there who is your friend, who is looking after you and who wants you to, you know, connect with him in that way. So it's like when something happens and I, and I, I think all of us could agree that when we leave, no matter what it is, whether it's buying a house, whether it's getting a job, it's kind of, that we're able to understand maybe why those things are happening and even better know how to how to deal with them know how we, we have a community to go to or we have a each other to go to and even our teachers have all even more recently even more really made sure that we all know how we could in they've come up to how could we help you so that when you finish school you know as much as you need to know you know and it's a it's really really quite nice to be able to go wow if i really ever need to know how to pay taxes or if i really need to know how to buy a car or how to start a bank account you know you have these people here to help you know how to do that last one uh, do you have already a, a kind of life vision for myself yes well <laughs> it's a hard <laughs> question i think i'm definitely a person who is one of one with many interests so i'm starting to realize that there's not maybe one thing that i'm you know dead set on I guess I haven't, I don't know exactly yet what it would be that's my objectory or trajectory. trajectory, <laughs> trajectory. <yeah. laughs> But I know that no matter what, um, the goal for me is to be able to live like a holistic life where I'm able to follow my passions or find what it is and put the effort in to be able to achieve that, you know, not just go with the easy path, but be able to put the hard work in to be able to find a yeah, my goal of what I'd like to do and be able to incorporate this philosophy into my life, I guess, is, is this my goal. There wouldn't be a point where I've reached to always, throughout my whole life, when I'm old lady, you know, just be able to still know what I could work on myself, how I could become a better person, how I could help other people, how I could express what, I, what I've been able to get this sort of solace to give that to other people, to be able to to give that more to the world. I guess that's that's the objective is to, to do that. So the main thing is to be able to work on getting us, yeah, being humble, getting humility, and trying to work on being able to be a better person in the world. Right. Do you have already a life vision for yeah. your future? Yeah. What is it? Um, well, I want to become a music producer and DJ, mm -hmm. travel the world, make records with people, play music. Right. All that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. No problems. <laughs>